Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 137 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and today presented to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. And today, taking a seat with us, former all-star closer of the Boston Red Sox, the Philadelphia Phillies, the Washington Nationals, Jonathan Papelbon. Long time no see. Dude, where I don't even know where you live. Fill me in. What's going on in your life? I'm at the beach house right now. I'm just getting out of the pool but, uh, before the kids go back to school. But, uh, yeah, man, you know, I, honestly, <laughs> after baseball was done, I started this company, this mobile blood work company called Diago. So it's like you go to the doctor, you get blood work, you don't have to go to the next place and sit and wait forever. They, all, all of our people come to you. Anyway, I've been doing that since I retired. And, uh, yeah, so now I'm like, you know what? I got this business started off, and I'm like, Man, let's get back in the game. The game needs pap. And um, I had a few people kind of talk me into it. You know, man, I'm, I'm an action junkie. I'm a closer. I love to gamble. I love to talk shit. I love to talk sports. So I, I got to get back in the game, Rosie. You know what right. I mean. So what does that mean? You want back in the game. Do you want to – you don't want to coach. Listen, you made too much oh, money. Uh, no, you got young kids. You don't want to do that. Yeah, so what is no, hell no. I just, when I say that, I mean, at least know what the hell's going on in the game. Not be one of these guys you just never hear from again. You know what I mean? Well, I've seen you being active on social media, and that's how I reached out to you. You would, you would, that's right. Yeah, you tweeted something that I had tweeted, and you answered it. And so I was like, you know what? I haven't run into Papelbon. He's one of the most interesting characters the sport has seen in the last 30 years. So I figured let's catch up. When you, you say you're at the beach house, which I love, but. Do you just want to share, just tell us what state you're in. You don't have to give us like directions to your house, but where do you normally live now? Well, I normally live on the biggest house on the biggest hill on the big side of town in Mississippi. I'd say that much. <laughs> well, you did. You went to Mississippi State. That was your that's place. Right. That's, that's, that's the right. place that groomed you. By the way, you look amazing. Like you look exactly the same as like when you were grimacing on the mound after winning it all in 2000 and. Seven years doing that whole thing. Do you, I mean, I would have that picture printed all over my house if that had been me. Well, um, I do have a casino at the house, and yes, there's there's many there's many of photos and many of dead animals and many of um, trophies. But you know, look, Rose, I, I tell you what, I just I, I was one of those players. I just love the game, man, and I, I you know I wanted to kind of get back and, and, and just know at least what's going on, man, and. Um, Hell, I, I love the gamble too, man. So you love the I, action. I, mean, I was the one we'd sit in the bullpen, we'd gamble on balls and strikes. Would you? Who would you no, sit we'd gamble, we'd gamble so on? You... Flick and seeds. We gamble who could eat the most seeds. I mean, like it was. I mean, you've seen Jordan. He's the same. They're all of us are just built the same way. Yeah, listen, I used to cover poker for a living, so I know the most degenerate people there are. Like, those guys weren't athletes at all. They would drive past a, a basketball hoop, and they'd bet each other ten grand to see who could hit more free throws out of ten. So you're saying yeah. that's the kind of dude you are right now? Oh, no, I've always been that kind of guy. Like, from day one, when Theo Epstein and Terry Francona wanted me to be a starter, and I said, I'm way too ADHD for starting. I cannot sit down on the bench for five days. That's not happening with me. I'm closing, and they laughed at me, and, you know, of course, it's all been written now, but, you know, I, I think that, you know, today's game, man, you have to, like, just, you know, be you, man, and, and that's what who I'll try to be, and look, I'm doing the podcast stuff, having fun with it, you know, we're going to Wobine, you know, the, pretty much the Kentucky Derby up in Toronto, so, you know, we, we got the horses going, we're doing it all, Rosie. So, I'm curious. Do you think that um, because I've heard this both ways and I just want to be fair and honest with you. Millar told me that he he you first caught his eye in spring training when you hit Sammy Sosa. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were a kid and they had just won the World Series and you came into a spring training game and you right. Am I am I on the wrong right yes. story here? Well, no, no. He doesn't tell the whole story. Right. Okay. So I made the big – I thought the big league bus was going to come pick me up in minor league camp. No, big leaguers don't go pick up minor leaguers. So I made them wait, and I get on the van, the big league van, and Millar says, here's your spot. It literally was the uh, spot where you – it's like I could fit one ass cheek on the seat, essentially. And I was starting that day, 
And uh, so we get there anyway. Yeah, I think it was like um, Daniel Cabrera was throwing 100, drilling everybody. And I'm like, this was like my first start ever in spring training. And I'm like, mother, look, I got to go out and hit somebody in my first outing. You know what I mean? So, of course, I'm not – I'm not going back in that clubhouse without drilling somebody. And I had like three – Rafael Palmero, Sammy Sosa, I think uh, B.J. Serhoff. So I chose Sosa. Did guys come up to you afterward and say, way to go, dog? No, not really. I got a little bit more of my seat back on the way home. <laughs> Two That's ass cheeks. You got multiple ass cheeks. Yeah. See, Millar won't tell you all that bullshit now. He wants to come across as the, you know, the good, fun-loving guy. No, he would ride your ass, too. He, would, he rode my ass a little bit. I'm sure he did, because he came up at a time when they would ride his, too. So that's that's the oh, way yeah. the game was. And, and listen, it's changed probably for the better a little bit. Do you think overall that – would you have considered yourself a good teammate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I think you don't even ask me that. You ask other players that and that have played with you because I've had people come up to me and say, man, I fucking hated you. And then I get on this team and I'm like, man, you're you're way different than I thought, man. Like, let's go to a steak dinner. You know what I mean? I, I didn't care about people hating me when I played against them. You know, I, I, was, I was cool with that. But, I, I mean, for me, I didn't give a shit how many beers I drank the night before. I was ready. Why and did I you drink five. a did you drink a lot before you played? No, man. We, I mean, shit. Every night. I mean, like, that's what we did, man. Like, early, that's what I did, you know. And, you know, there would be times where, you know, shit, you, you can't wind down. And, like, you have to, like, you have to learn how to, like, do that over time and be able to, like, go to sleep, get ready, go to sleep, fly on a plane. Like, that's no bullshit. That's hard to do. I get it. I mean, it's a great living. It's it's the best gig around. It ain't easy. I mean, it's just it, it can be a tough. And when you're the closer, and it's all on you, like how did you deal with failure? You were very successful a lot of the time, but inevitably you're going to give one up. So how did you personally deal with it? I'd go out and have a drink. Seriously? I mean, like, yeah, seriously. Like that was my way of like, okay, I'm gonna go have a drink. I'm gonna think about it. And I'm one of, when I want to go to bed at night, I want that head to hit the pillow and it's out. Like, I'm not even thinking about it anymore. And bam, let's go the next day. Like, I was, I was actually fairly good at it. You know, I felt like I was fairly good at turning the page. Um, partly, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know, Rosie. I never thought making it and playing in the big leagues was all that good. I wanted to obviously strive for the Hall of Fame, but I fell short of that because I didn't get the 5% vote this year. But, you know, with that all being said, you know, that's a player's ultimate dream is to get to the Hall of Fame, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so that was my goal the entire time. It'd be a good to me, you know. Were you hurt when you didn't get the 5% to stay on the ballot? No, 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 no. Look, at the end of the day, um, that's not going to make or break me what I do. You know, like I said, when baseball was done, I started this company. It was not even thinking about it until, you know, a few people, you know, approached me and, and were like, listen, like, let's talk shit. Let's talk baseball. And I love baseball. And, dude, I love sports. I love football. I love them all, dude. Like, I'm an action junkie. That's why I told Theo and Tito to shove it up their ass. I'm your closer. And what happened? We go out and win a World Series, okay? So, no, you know, Theo FC is the brain. I'm the train. Is that the discussion you really had with them? Did you have to sit down with them? And and is that the way you said it? Yeah, it, it, it basically went down like this. Um, Pat, you're going to start. God damn, why y'all want me to start, man? Like, I, I was just in the playoffs. I just dominated, like, five innings of no-hit baseball last playoffs. I think Chicago, against Chicago. Chicago won it that year in 05. And um, I'm like, I love it. This is what I'm going to be successful at. No, you're going to start. I said, okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll start. But by the end of spring training, if you don't have a closer, I'm closing. Well, I knew that year that, like, it was going to be kind of a toss-up. And going into the season without a closer, I knew I knew they wanted that. So I kind of set bait trap on them, you know what I mean? Because I knew what was in the bullpen. Smart. And that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote, you know? Well, people probably don't realize how – great your numbers are your career set you were six-time all-star 368 career saves 
a 2-4-4 ERA. Do you think that because of some of the stuff that went on with you, that it overshadows the career that you had in some people's now, eyes? Look, Rosie, um, at the end of the day, I am who I am, and I put my head to sleep easy at night. Um, I don't care how many fights I got in with Joe West. Uh, I don't know how I, I don't know how hundreds of thousands of dollars Joe West find me. Um, you know, were there brawls? Yeah, there were brawls all the time. I just mine happened to be spilled over on national TV. Usually it doesn't. You know, sometimes they do. You have your Barry Bonds. Is you have all the. I mean, you had this is part of baseball, man. You're like me and my brothers have fought for way less than what me and Harper did, or you know, me and Jason Veritek used to whip my ass when I was a cocky little shit, man. Like, that's how it is, you know. But do you do you regret any of it, or no, no. like, do you ever look back? Listen, you're a father now, right? So do you ever yeah. look back at it and say, "Shit, I should have handled that differently, man"? Um, no, not really, Rosie. No. No, like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just the type where, like, I don't really, like, either you're going to like it or you're not. I can't make your decision, uh, you know, um, how I go about it and what I say. Or, I mean, look, at the end of the day, everything I stay, say, I'm going to stand behind. You know, I've never said something and crawfish and like crawfished away from it. It's not me. You know no, it's I mean? not you. No. Well, so, listen, as long as you're comfortable with it at the end of the day, that's that's what matters. Because, I mean, I regretted some things that I've done or or said over the years. And I, you know, I didn't have my biggest mistakes play out in on TV. I mean, at the end of the day, somebody in your family might say, Jonathan, like, did anybody call uh, you? After? Well, my, my mom would say that shit all the time. Jonathan. What the hell you do? Oh my God! What what the hell? You had a beer can and you're in your underwear. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, of course. You know. Well, what'd she say after the Harper thing? Um, I think she by by then at that point I think she was probably like, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with him, you know, because it it, it became a long road. It became, um, you know, we had it was it. Look, I went from the Red Sox thinking I'm going to the Phillies to win another two or three championship rings. Right. Ryan Howard, Chase Utley, Halliday. It just all – people started getting hurt. We tried to bring Cliff. Dude, we had Cliff Lee, Cole Hamels, Ryan Howard, Jimmy Rollins, Chase Utley, myself, Roy Halliday. What? You know? And we didn't – we finished almost second to last and last, and I, I think I'm going to another – uh, you know, playoff team, and it didn't. And I just, you know, I started getting frustrated a lot, you know, too. And I was like, man, like, it ain't worth, like, I could have kept playing for another few more million dollars, but it wasn't about that for me. And it never was. If it was about that for me, I would have, I would have stayed being a starter and try to make more money and pitch every five days. But it wasn't like that for me. Did you and Bryce ever sit down and, like, figure it out once that happened or or was the relationship too far frayed where you were like yeah, no we we called each other man and and you know basically say you know hey you know as soon as the game was over like that's how you handle it like there's i called the team meeting rizzo was there i don't know which owners were there everybody was there Matt Williams at that point had no control of the team. He didn't say anything as a man. Oh no, he did. He said, "Guys, we have to. We can't fight when we have differences." And I looked at him like, "What the hell are you talking about, Matt Williams? Like that's what you did. I don't, don't, you know." Anyway, I happened to be the only one that got fined out of the whole deal. Bryce didn't get fined. I ended up fighting it, got my money back. Um, and so it just left a, 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 a distaste in my mouth, you know, with that organization. Hell, Rosie, they tried to find me uh, $230,000 for that incident. The last one that got fined was Barry Bonds, and he got fined like 5000 bucks For the Jeff Kent thing? For, yeah, him and Jeff Kent, yeah. That's a then big game. Go Bryce Harper and John Baffelbonds over a quarter million. Damn. You got yeah, your money back, said. you said. You got your money yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah. 
The Chris Rose Rotation presented to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. So I want you to follow a few instructions. Take your phone, download the SeatGeek app, off you go. You want to check out your favorite guest on the Chris Rose Rotation, your favorite baseball team out there. You want to get your NFL tickets for the upcoming season. NBA is not too far away. College football, NHL will be here before you know it. You want to head to your favorite concert, just download the SeatGeek app and use the code word Rose. You're going to get 20 bucks off of your first order. Here's the great thing about SeatGeek. It actually does your homework for you. It rates each seat on a scale of zero to 10, and it uses color codes as well. So green, that means it's a good deal for you. Red, this color, not so much. You might end up sitting next to me because, you know, you don't want to sit next to the Rose Man. It'll probably be graded out at a one or something like that. If you sit next to Jimmy or Jake, that means it's probably a green one, probably like a nine or a 10. So that's a good deal. So once again, go see your favorite sporting event, your concert, whatever it is. Download the SeatGeek app today. Promo code is Rose. You're going to get 20 bucks off your first order. I'll see you at the game. Or maybe Jimmy and Jake will. Do you love Boston? I do. When was the last time you were up there? Uh, last time I was up there, I was pumping Chad and um, opening day pitch in the ALCS last year, 91. Yeah. Blew out my Tommy John, went skiing, separated my shoulder, all this after my career was over, Rosie. Uh, what's it like when you walk around Boston? It's good, man. The people there, you know, I've always had a good relationship with them. Up there. And I feel like I've had a good relationship with the people in Philly. But see, the people in Philly are, they take it a lot more personal than the people in Boston do. The people in Boston, really? you know. Yes. Yeah, that's how Philly is, man. Like, you know. You you take a Philly fan that – Rose, I had 28 saves in a row. I blew one, and the whole stadium booed me. And I'm like, okay, I get it. You know, that's when I grabbed my crotch and everybody. Joe West came around and, and literally got in my face. Told him, you know, get out – anyway. Um, I, can yeah. I tell you about what I thought about that? Um, I didn't like that you grabbed your crotch, whatever. That's fine. I didn't like that he was the one that was dictating, no pun intended, what you should have done, right? That, to me, that was an issue. So did you guys ever smooth that one over? No. I came out to Joe West's music one time. Just to, like, (laughs) (laughs) and I said, I asked him for a truce, and he, he was so mad, dude. He was just. He was a mad, angry individual at me. I think it all happened because he called a guy safe at first before we had replay and all that bullshit. And I think I headbutted him or I got in his face as a rookie, and he didn't like a rookie doing that. And it was from day one, you know. So that's the only reason why. But, yeah, I played his music. His country is terrible. You know, his country music song. And I like country music. It was like, all right, it was terrible. And he got so mad, like he was, he was eye fighting me from where he was standing. Um, was it intimidating for you at all to join the big league club that had just won the World Series and has big personalities like Poppy out there and Millar was a big one and Manny Ramirez was Manny and shit, Tito started to become a big personality and all that stuff. Was it intimidating for you? Um, no, Rosie, it wasn't. I just, um, you know, I I understood it and I got it. Like, Rosie, like, I was the type that, like, oh, you want to dress me up like a a horny, ugly witch and fly me across the the country? Hell yeah, I'm in. Like, let's do this shit. Drink the whole way. And so, like, I don't know, man. That's the only thing I miss. I will say that too. It's the only thing I miss is the 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 camaraderie, the suppers, the flights, the cars, the even the fucking rain delays. We go and throw them fucking dice, and you know, I mean, I miss all that. Was that the best part about being a big leaguer, or is it something? That, did you do you miss? 100%. You don't miss the competition, like you don't miss staring down ninth inning, two outs, two guys oh, on. Yeah. yeah, of course I do. I mean, I, I get that with my son right now, and he's he's like, Dad, like, 
chill out, you know? I'm like, nah, you don't get it, dude. You know what I mean? But it's still there. It'll never leave, you know? What what type of little league parent are you? I only got – I'm a coach, head coach. I got tossed – I think I've gotten tossed um, quite a few times, yeah. I got Jonathan. tossed in girls, girls softball. What, what the fuck did you do? I don't know. I don't even really remember. Um, I think in the girls softball one, she wanted to get the ball back to the pitcher, like start the game back. And I kept going to get the ball and like not letting the game start back. You know, she tried to roll it to the, I don't know. I just, I, I'm, I'm done with coaching though. Yeah. It's, 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 it's past that point. You know, I'm, I'm, I give up. Come on. Just be a, I've gotten two kids through little league. Just be a supportive parent. Just make yeah. sure they're enjoying it. Just make sure they love it. That's all. Yeah. That's it. You know, I mean, look, at the end of the day, you know, the older you get and your kids get older, they start saying that, you know, you're, you, you lost your mind there. So, and, and like when your wife says it, eh, doesn't hit his home as much. But when your kids <laughs> say it, damn son, maybe, maybe you're right. Uh, don't take this the wrong way. Were you crazy when you played? Yeah, I think so. I think to, to a certain extent. Um, and at, at, at sometimes I would let that carry over the line. Yeah, of course. Um, but I did me, Rosie. And, you know, the thing about baseball is you come from a lot of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, you look at, I mean, guys throwing – games on acid is that crazy like what is crazy you know what i mean yes i would that would qualify as crazy but there were times where we'd look at you and we'd wonder like is it an act or is he like is the eye, you know how the eyes start flickering a little bit well i got a lazy eye too and so that's why i kind of like trying to zone in my left eye is lazy and that's how oh. my wife actually knows what yeah so when it goes bad my wife cuts me off that's what she knows it's like my <laughs> It's like my flair. It sucks, you know, because it's the way it is. But I don't, I don't question any of her decisions, you know, because I was one of them. So, I mean, it's it's a dead giveaway, though. Who was the – No, I, it, wasn't, it wasn't for intimidating. I was just jacked every night. Um, I mean, yeah, I took shots at Jaeger before games and just, just to get the blood pumping. I mean – yeah, believe it or not, a lot of, I don't think a lot of athletes will admit this, but I think a few, I think more than the public knows. Take, you know, no, I'm not saying getting wasted. No, I'm saying taking the edge off. You know, I mean, think about it. You know, you're going into to the Coliseum. You're going into war, like old Yankee Stadium. When I went into that place, man, it felt like they were on top of you. You know, and so I mean, it did, I, I think it, I think it helped me more than anything. You pitched on a bunch of all-star teams with Mariano Rivera. Did you guys talk? Yeah, man. I, I used to talk to Mo a lot. Um, and then there was the one time when um, he – I went to – well, they interviewed Terry, and Tito said uh, – or no, they interviewed me, and I said – they said, do you want to close the game in the last all-star game in New York? And I said, yeah, well, of course I do. But my manager, Terry Francona, whether or not he lets me do it, I mean, or not, you know, yeah, I want to close it. Why would not? Well, they took it like, you know, I want to close it, Mariano, you know, of course. And needless to say, the parade didn't go very well through New York City. Um, and then <laughs> I, see, I see Mo in the outfield, Shaq, because he was like, Shaq, this dude would shag like crazy. And uh, he comes up to me, he's like, oh, no, 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 Pop. Bob, I have to teach you something, you know? And I was like, Mo, listen, I, they, of course I want to close, but do I think I'm closing? No, I know you're closing. He's like, good boy, good boy. <laughs> so you guys had a good relationship. Yeah, we did, yeah. It's hard not to have a good relationship with him. And, I mean, I, all the Yankees players, I, had, I felt like I had a good, you know, competitive um, relationship with all of them. I mean, will I go out to dinner with some of them? No, but we, are our personalities different? Yeah, but we had a mutual comp competitive respect. You know what I mean? Well, but were there ever guys that would get in the box that you hated? Were you like, God, I hate that motherfucker. I really want to get him out. Yeah, of course. Like, all of them. But I was there a guy? 
a guy, I know you want to get him out because that's your job. And I understand that. Like you have to treat it that way. But was there ever a guy that you had beef with? You were like, uh, because I think that we as fans sometimes think that exists. That doesn't happen. No, I didn't have beef with anybody. If I felt like I needed to drill somebody for any for really reason whatsoever, I just did it. What if I Joe mean, West I, stepped in the box? Oh, that's a hundred percent. He's getting drilled. That's, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, that's like under the armpit. You know, I'm not cool with the head. No, I mean I think you know the head's no good. Uh, like, but under the armpit, that hurts, bro. Did you ever hit anybody outside of Sosa on purpose where you felt like he, I need to stand up for him? Yes. Oh, yes. Like, there were times where um, it needed to be done, and I wouldn't want it to scare the next day. Like, it didn't matter if I had a lead, if I had a one-run or a three-run lead. If, it, if I needed to go out there and hit somebody or send a message back to them before the next game tomorrow and say, okay, I'm going to send it back. We're finished. Let's go to tomorrow. I, had, I did it. Like, I didn't give a shit if the game was on the line. If if the business needed to be taken care of for the team, I did it. I didn't give a – at that point in time, that stat means nothing to me. Like, the respect of my teammates is what it boiled down to. Um, who was the best teammate you played with? The guy where you're like, that dude is amazing. Um, Man – you know, there's a lot of them, but probably Pedroia, man. That 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 guy was one of the guys. I saw him from the minor, played with him from the minor leagues on. I saw him be able to like literally make adjustments so easy and so on the go, and just like dude played with broken fingers and like like dude like man, they just don't like. It's just one like like those the Chase Utleys where you like. That, we had new rules in play because of Chase Utley slide that second. You know, I mean, those are the kind of guys that I liked, you know. Plus, hey, Pedroia, David, I, I, what? I remember that he would come out at like 1.30, like almost full uni every day. Like, he's ready. He is, he was so ready. Well, and I like it. He talks shit, but he, and he backs it up. And, you know, like, he was my style of player. And, um, I, I don't know, man. Like, you know, you had your Davids and, you know, they were all in Millar's and, and they were great and they kept the locker room light and they bought you supper, you know, not Millar. Millar was cheap as hell. He probably is still cheap, but, you know, Poppy would. And, um, I, you know, for me, it was so awesome that, you know, they let me into that group. I mean, I remember hanging around the poker table. And Millar would just look at me like, what you doing here? You know, like, what are you doing? And I, was, I ain't doing nothing. You know, I'm just watching, just watching. Well, eventually, I got my invite, and I never looked back, you know. So that, that's what it was about, you know. By the way, Kevy has bought me dinner a lot. So I just want to – Yeah, he's loosened yeah. up. He's loosened up the purse strings a little bit. Well, see, he never bought – I think what – you know, I think he was just happened to be around a lot more – big money guys at the time. So he yeah. kind of quite let, you know. Well, that, that part hasn't changed now. That part hasn't <laughs> changed. He's around some big ballers. Let's my yeah. man, my man is, uh, is still doing it. He's still doing it. It was interesting what you said about Philadelphia, because I think the perception is that you hated it there. No, I hated losing. I hated, I hated going there and Ruben Amaro was handed a, a brand new Lamborghini and the Lamborghini started falling apart. I mean, dude, we – after Howard tore his Achilles, he was never the same. Utley, I, he, he couldn't play most of the time, the first two or three years there. Um, man, it was just tough. Roy started going downhill, it, you know. I don't know. I, I, I really thought I was going there and winning a bunch of championships. And, I, and I, maybe I had my sights set a little bit too high. Yeah. But – when was the last time you put on your World Series ring from 07? Man, I don't know. I think maybe at David's event in Dominican mm -hmm. two years ago. But man, I don't, I don't, I don't wear that thing very much, Rosie. I'm, I'm with my chickens and I'm farming my stuff and uh, you know. Yeah, that's probably not the best place to put on a World Series ring. Yeah, no, no, no. Especially if you're sacrificing live chickens. You oh. know what I mean? Yeah, that's not. I'm not good at that sort of stuff. 
You know yeah, what I would no. say? Wear it around. When you go up to Boston, this is one of the cool things Millar told me. Um, and I always loved walking around when we would do shows up in Boston because people literally like come up and hug you. And it's Millar too, though. It's Millar yeah, too. I mean, listen, I, I get it, but I think that they would treat you the same in part because oh, we, yeah. as, we as fans get so much happiness from these moments. And to be able to see something special like a World Series ring, not I'm not saying players take it for granted, but we don't get to see them that often. So when you see it, it's like, oh my God, you know, it's brings joy. Oh, to yeah. Me. Yeah. And it, it, it is that way. When we, and, and, you know, like, I'll tell you one thing. My wife was treated really, my family was treated really good there. You know, I mean, we lived in the city. Um, eventually, you know, Tom and Giselle moved in the city, kind of catty quarter from, I mean, it's, you know, it's Beacon Street right there. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, just the people of Austin, like just, it wasn't just me, it was my family and my wife, you know, everywhere she went. And, and so I loved it there, man. Did you know Tom Brady? Yeah, we did some Under Armour things um, together a couple of times in Baltimore. He was an Under Armour guy. Mm-hmm. I was like one of their first guys to wear their cleats, you know. Their first cleats were terrible, but I mean, <laughs> they're paying me. You know? <laughs> I don't know what's ever happened to him. I've kind of lost track. Can you believe that? He just turned 45 and he's still sl- How old are you? I'm 42. Can do you Well, could you still throw? If like if I mean you're in great shape, you look great. I mean, I could, look, Rosie, I could, man. Um but as far as going through an entire season, probably not. I mean, that's that's hard. Once you stop that, I mean, maybe a half a season. But I mean, I'd have to learn how to pitch without 95 plus and and that's hard to do for me. <laughs> well, these days, yeah. Like I mean, come on, dude. What? Yeah. Do you watch the game a lot? I do. I do. I do. I, I love to gamble on the game, man. Like, I couldn't gamble on the game when I played, you know, except mm-hmm. for, like, shit in the bullpen on seeds or, right. you know, how many – we used to gamble all the time when we'd pick a fan out and see how who would drink the most beer or, you know, just stuff like that. Who'd always win the most money in the pen? Who'd all, you'd be like, God damn, that guy won again? Kyle Schneider. You know who he is? He, and now he's a pitching coach. With, oh, uh, yeah. Cash. He's with yeah. Cash over there in uh, Tampa yeah. Bay. Man, that's something. I think he took 50 grand from David Ortiz one time on a flight. In poker? Yeah. Damn. Well, I remember hearing the story about the, the guy who bought the uh, won the boat from Poppy or something like that. You weren't there for yeah. were you there for that. Yeah, dude. Like he's the world's worst gambler. He, I think it took him two years to figure out when you ha- both have an ace, right? Well, what's <laughs> your next kicker? <laughs> and he'd be like, "That's bullshit. We both have an ace. That's bullshit." And we're like, "No, no, dude." Poppy, you got like, you got ace like seven. That. You got ace seven, Poppy. That's not gonna play. Yeah. Yeah, it was brutal, Rosie. But nobody told them. Nobody told them, you know? Like, hey, just keep playing, bud. What was the uh, what was the most fun you ever had in Major League Baseball? Like, if somebody says, boil it down to one moment for you, is there one? Yeah, probably. I mean, besides, like, winning shit, uh, uh, all-star party with 50 Cent in New York was pretty fun. Yeah, we had a good time that night. Where was um, that? Oh, he had that. I mean, I was like, I remember. Were you uh, a little drunk? Yeah, I, I think my wife and her friend was like crushing on LL Cool J or something. It was like oh. a, it, it was fun night, you know. Um, hey, the ladies love the Cool ladies, J, dude. Yeah, yeah. My wife made a beeline for him. We were at the same charity uh, event one time. She's like, LL's here. I was like, go get here. Yeah. Go get your picture, honey, because believe right, me. Right. You're, yeah, sorry. I get it. Like, I understand. I see him. He's beaming with personality. He's yeah. great looking still. He's got the smile. Like, I'm, I get it. I understand. No, I don't think either. Like, go do your thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be here, the, you know, when the night's over. You want to come back? I'm good. Right. Yeah, whatever. But listen, we had a good run. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Oh, when's, shit, yo, when's school start for your kitties? When's that start? Yeah, we got next week, bro. And how old are they? 
My son's 12, my daughter's 13. Um, and then I have a three-year-old, man. Yeah, so we, I would have had a bunch of kids. My wife, she went through some miscarriages and tough pregnancies, but we would have had a bunch, but I only got three kids, man. And then, then we're done. That's good, though. Three's a good number. It is, it is. You know, but I'm at that age with my son and my daughter, but they're teenagers now, about to yeah. be, you know. Yeah, so it's, it's like. It's a different ball game, man. I can tell you. I got 21 and 16. It's different yeah, ball Yeah, dude. Oh, man. It's – can't tell him anything right now. But I was um, the same way, so. Just be a good listener. That's all I say. That's yeah. the only advice I say is because, you know what, it's been a wacky world the last two and a half years. So, you know, we don't know what effect it's had on our kids. and It's hard enough for us as adults to get yeah. through what we got through, right? Like, oh, I just yeah. think we have to be a little more patient with our kids because I'm not exactly sure – what it did to them oh yeah no i totally agree with you bro it's it's a lot of things a lot of things have changed man and that's why i got into that business because the whole models and the way people are living are changing man the, the, the model of how you go about your life mm -hmm. is you know come to me do it for me i don't have to go anywhere yeah that's where our world's going do you like it do you like being in the business world and did, did you ever think that you'd You'd be I do, I do, because I'm learning that I don't know shit about it. My brother's been in it since he left Double A. So my brother went to AAA, Double A. They never made it. They went straight into medical sales. Um, long story short, we started this company a year and a half ago. We've taken it over just about all of Florida, um, and you know we. We, we I'm, I'm here now. Actually, I got to meet with this Governor DeSantis here here shortly. Um, we're trying to sign all the penitentiary deals here. Oh, so okay. essentially the all the prisoners don't have to leave the facility to go get all their blood work done. Our See, people now, come to them. I think a lot of people would be in favor of that. I don't care where your oh, politics are. I don't care where you live or you stand on things. I would think that people would still want uh, prisoners behind bars as long as they're getting taken care of the right way. Yeah, less gas to take them where it, it all works out. But it, I've, I've slowly realized in this business world for Rosie. There's like three people that make decisions. It's not, especially when it comes to the state, you know. So I'm always getting told, pump my brakes by our owner and my brother, you know. And it's all good, though, man. You don't seem like a I pump the brakes guy, though. No. No. Nope. Well, one, two last things. Robbie, by the way, do we have our wheel of moderately interesting things available? He's going to check on that. Okay. Um, I loved your mohawk back in the day. I think I might be pissed if you do your mohawk with as good a hair as you've got over 40. You're not ever going to do the mohawk thing again, are you? I don't know. You know, um, my son actually wants it now. Ooh, uh-oh. It came back to bite you, didn't it? Yeah. And look, Rosie, it bugs me to death. He's got eight armbands. He's got the leg, shoulder. He's got the oven mitt on at first base. Like, he's fast. And it's <laughs> like, oh. Uh, all this drive me crazy. All this shit, man. All the and um, the eye black it drives me nuts. And then we got all the way down the face. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Kids be kids, man. That's pretty good. All right. Before we get out of here, uh, we do a little thing here on the Rose Rotation. And it's called spinning the wheel of moderately interesting things. So it's a it's five categories. We'll land on one. Uh, you'll answer the question. I'll let you go back to being dad and hanging out in the pool and go doing your blood work for your company. So here we go. We'll spin the wheel, and it will land on. Let's see here. There it goes. And today it's landing on, what is that, crushing it? Crushing it. Who was your celebrity crush, your first celebrity crush when you were growing up? Oh, man, that's easy. Britney Spears. Great one. Britney Spears. Yeah, man. I like, hit me, baby, more. and that little. Cause see, I went to Rosie. I went to all private Catholic high school. You know, we were really good in all our sports, and like, literally, that was the school uniform she was wearing when I went to school. So it was like instant, like instant fascination. Did you ever run into her? Like sometimes you'll run into your celebrity no, crush. No, I never did. I never did. I think she, by the time, I think she'd been gone crazy already, you know, and shave her head and all that shit. And I probably wouldn't run into her. My crowd and her crowd probably never would go through. You guys don't. You guys don't go co mingle. No, I don't think so, dude. Um, I'm happy we were able to catch up a little bit. 
and and yeah, uh, it's, it's, yeah it's been too long. Well. No, I'm I'm happy and I'm happy. Listen, all I ever care about when they when people come on this show is that you seem happy and you're in a good place and you definitely seem like that. So yeah, I yeah. think. The, Baseball world will be happy, uh, regardless of whatever they thought about Jonathan Papelbon back in the day, to see that you're happy and you're healthy and you got good kids and your wife's all good, right? Yeah, I man, that's what life's all about and having fun, man. I think um, I took baseball so serious for so long and was so um, just wired for that fight every night. It's, it's now, it's, it's um, I, I like to have more fun with it and gamble and talk shit about, you know, it's just that's it's fun. So yeah, I'm glad we can do, we can do it again, man. We'll, we'll be we'll be along the road, man. I ain't going nowhere. I appreciate that. Hopefully, I'm not going anywhere. I just gotta you know I gotta check. You, you never know. As long as the doors aren't locked every day, that's all I care about here. Yeah, man. Look now, I'm, I'm me and Blackjack from when he used to be at Barstool, so we got Blackjack and Pat now. I got my podcast once a week. We talk shit too. So tell Blackjack I say hi as well. Yes, I will. All right, brother. A uh, special okay. shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the one and only Robbie Shiraka, our amazing summer intern, Alden Stone as well. That is Jonathan Papelbon. I am Chris Rose. We will see you next time on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. Quick reminder, every day I do baseball today, Monday through Friday with Trevor Plouffe. You can catch it on podcast form on YouTube and also live on AMP. Join us for an hour every day, 1130 a.m. Eastern. Come chop it up with Plouffe and me. Ask us questions, give us comments, your concerns, and what you're thinking about the baseball world. We'll see you on the AMP app. Download it today.